Uh, good morning. It's 9.30 and time to open today's hearing session. Uh, the session today, this morning, uh, concerns matter eight, which relates to the supply and delivery of housing land. Can I just check with Caroline that you can see and hear me okay? Yeah, good morning, Mr Ward. Everything is fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Caroline. Uh, my name is Kevin Ward and my colleague is Phil Milam, uh, with inspectors appointed by the Secretary of State under Section 20 of the Planning and Compulsory Purchase Act 2004 to carry out the independent examination of the Folkestone and Hythe District Core Strategy Review. And the programme officer for the examination is Caroline Williams and she'll be present for the duration of the hearing session. Um, today, if possible, we prefer it if everyone involved could keep cameras on um, but have microphones on mute unless you're speaking. Um, if you don't wish to keep your camera on all the time, um, please turn it on when speaking, unless otherwise you prefer to speak, uh, make a contribution verbally. And um, please only speak when asked to do so. And if you can unmute your microphone when speaking, but otherwise keep it on mute. And there'll only be one participant speaking at a time. Um, if you do wish to speak at any point, if you can use the hand raise facility uh, and we'll bring you in at an appropriate point. Um, before we move on, if I could just get, um, first of all, the council representatives uh, to introduce themselves and then we'll take other participants. So, good morning. My name is Paul Shadaridium, uh, Queen's Council, acting for the council. Morning. Morning, sir. Good morning. My name is Timothy Bowley and I'm a planning policy specialist for folks in the Hive District Council. Morning. Good morning. My name's Adrian Tofts and I'm a specialist at uh, Folkestone and Hive District Council. Morning. Mr. Wheaton. Chris Wheaton from Quad advising Otterpool Park LLP on housing matters. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Horner. Graham Horner. Uh, Chairman of Shetway Area CPRE Committee for CPRE Kent, and I'm accompanied by Senior Planner Paul Buckley. Morning. Morning, Mr. Buckley. Can I just check your, your microphone's working okay? Good morning, sir. I hope you can hear me. I can, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berendt? Good morning, sir. Mr. Mark Berendt from uh, the Home Builders Federation. Morning. And um, Mr. Good. My name's uh, Matthew Good from Pegasus Group on behalf of Nichols Properties and Camland Hyde Limited. Morning. Okay, I think that's everybody. Uh, I appreciate there's perhaps one or two others from the council um, to be called upon if necessary, but we, we can bring those in uh, as and when. Okay, thank you. Um, hopefully you will have a copy of the agenda for today, uh, for this morning rather. Um, if you have any te technical difficulties or lose connection during the session, if you can contact the programme officer, um, either by phone or email, uh, I'm sure she'll do whatever she can to assist, but everything seems to be working okay at the moment. Um, if we can all make sure that mobile phones and other devices are switched onto silent mode, please, for the duration of the hearing session. Uh, we are scheduled uh, just for the morning uh, to deal with matter eight. Um, we have another session starting at two dealing with other policies. Um, so we will take a break at an appropriate point during the morning session. Um, as usual, if you can make sure your cameras are off and microphones are muted during the break, but make sure you're ready to return promptly when the session resumes. Um, all of the hearing sessions are being streamed live on the council's YouTube channel, uh, which can be accessed via the council's website. Um, are there any queries before we proceed in relation to the format of the hearing? No. Good. Um, any uh, procedural or housekeeping matters from the council before we move on? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. I see you're still in the council chamber, Mr. Shadaravian. Uh, we are. Yes, we are taking uh, every precaution. Yep. Yep. Good. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll move on then to uh, the agenda for item matter eight. Okay, uh, just before we get into matters 
properly just just to just to recap i think um we received uh yesterday um a document from the council reference ex053 which is essentially um an update to housing supply information and the housing trajectory um i understand that's been made available to other participants as well and it's it's on the council's website it is yes sir yeah, thank you um just uh, I suppose just to, to clarify that that I'm assuming is is the council's position now as far as housing supply and individual sites etc are concerned. It, it is. It's the updated position. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, not unusually for local plan examinations, uh, the situation just change as far as um, housing trajectories are concerned. So yes. Um, sensibly, um, uh, I would intend to, to base the discussion as much as possible, at least on that latest trajectory, given that that's the council's latest position. Um, I'm conscious, obviously, that that's, um, that's something that others have, have had um, fairly limited time to, to see. But um, I think from our perspective, there, it's not, not massively different than, than we had before. Um, obviously, there are, some, there are some differences, but we'll perhaps we can pick up what the differences are as we go through um, yep. in more detail. Uh, just, just one question before we start uh, again. Um, for the year 2019-20, um, the figures that we have uh, provided, are, are they actual recorded completions or are we still talking about estimates for that time? I'll ask Mr Bailey to, to confirm that for you. Uh, yes, sir. The um, the figures for 2019-20 are actual recorded um, completions for uh, that monitoring year. The it it, it varies very minor it can, in comparison to this the uh, figures that have been uh, forwarded to MHCLG. Um, the the actual figure that went to um, MHCLG is 400 is 446 and that difference is uh, down to how we record um, sites where there isn't necessarily um, a net gain on on the site so previous year we've recorded a loss on sites and then uh, the following year that dwelling has been replaced so it's just a way of us keeping control on um, recording losses and uh, com and uh, completions okay so the figure we, uh, the latest figure we have from the council for that year is four hundred and forty. So, yep, that's that's actual net gains. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perhaps. Um, well, we'll come on to talk about the trajectory in, in great detail, but perhaps um, just as a as a specific point, it might be better to express that column as actual completions just to, just to clarify the situation yeah okay yes um okay uh so just following on from that the figures for 2020 21 um they are obviously that, that you won't have completed the monitoring period for that anyway but that they are all um estimates that there's no there's no um actual completions factored into those figures uh, no, sir. Um, those uh, figures for 2021, um, they're obviously based on our annual m monitoring where we've gone around the individual sites and we've recorded um, the number of units that are currently under construction and yeah. have made an estimate based on that information. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Um, just for uh, the benefit of, of other participants, I'm hoping that you all um, have available a copy of the, the latest document produced by the Council, reference EX053. Um, it is available on the Council's website, I understand, from the last check, but it'd be useful if everyone could have that to hand as we go through. Okay, thank you. Um, what I'd like to do, as you can see from the agenda, is is really just to go through um, the, the, the supply uh, of, of housing land. 
um, in in different time periods and um, probably uh, in terms of looking at the different sources of supply um, and estimates of, of start times and delivery rates etc probably pick that up as we go through um, years one to five predominantly and then um, that probably don't need to return to the same issues of principle later on um, but we'll see how we go so um, really uh, just a matter of working through um, I suppose just just a point to start in terms of um, years one to five um, conscious that that we also need to be looking at, at likely points of adoption um, of, of the plan, um, which is at the earliest going to be um, in this current year 20 stroke 21. So you'll see from the agenda that um, I've, I've tried to roll that forward as far as the five year situation is concerned, but we'll start with the plan period years one to five. Um, Mr. Buckley, do you have a question there? Sorry, so yes, thank you. Um, just a minor point. So just looking through Appendix 1, under the uh, figures for PPL, including 5% non-implementation discount. Sorry, can you just take me that? Repeat that again. Sorry. I'm on Appendix 1 of the, the revised figure. I, I note that the sum of the 6 to 10 year period for the PPL figure is given as 1041. My summing up of the five years actually comes to 1031. It's a minor point, but there is, I think, just a factual error there. And 42 on my version, is that? I think if you add it up, so it comes to 1031. I say it's a minor point, but... Um... It's all right. No, these, they all count. Um... Okay, I've got weather out in my head, but we'll we'll come to that. <laughs> perhaps perhaps one of the council officers could just have a look at that while we're while we're moving on, and just if there is a recalculation needed. Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Buckley. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll start then with um, years one to five, um, i.e., uh, twenty nineteen onwards for the first five years, um, just to. Uh, I suppose let's be clear about what what the requirement uh, is for that period. Um, starting off with with what's in the submitted core strategy review, we have a, an annual housing requirement of seven hundred and thirty eight dwellings. Um, the council um, have acknowledged that it would be sensible to uh, look for a stepped trajectory, a stepped housing requirement. So perhaps perhaps the council could just start off by explaining the, the rationale. I suppose first the principle for that, which which we did deal with to a large extent in, in the earlier session on matter three, um, but also the specific figure that's now been suggested for that time period. What's the rationale for that? Okay, so um, when uh, the uh, core strategy review was submitted, um, we um, were looking for a, a consistent annual requirement of 738, as you've mentioned. Um, between submission and preparation of uh, our responses to the MRQs, uh, the trajectory for the garden settlement was revised. Uh, this uh, delayed first completions on site and also proposed a more gradual increase in completions. Uh, this had um, a direct effect on um, our five-year land supply. Um, and so the council had to look at revising its position and moving to uh, a stepped trajectory for the plan. Uh, and then under, under the uh, revised uh, trajectory, we're now looking um, at a um, requirement of 590 year. Um. Okay, so um, previously, um, having re recognised the sense of a, of a stepped trajectory, the, the Council's Matter 3 statement and the discussion we had at that stage would suggest we're suggesting a, 
for the first five years a figure of 630, but that's been revised down to, to 590. What, what's the specific basis for that more recent adjustment? Um, I think that's just come about as a consequence of revising the um, housing trajectory. There are some sites that have uh, fallen out, but there are also um, sites that have come back in. So I think this just gives us more of a, um, a certain position based on the current tra trajectory that's being provided um, and also ensures that, that the, the council can um, confidently meet um, its housing requirement and be within um, and, and pass the um, housing delivery test. So is it fair to say that the, the figure that's been uh, arrived at 590 a year is a, a consequence of an assessment of, of what the likely supply is? It's, it's been done through that methodology? That's correct, yes. Okay. And that's also factoring in the need for um, a 5% buffer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Before we move on, any any comments um, in relation to that particular aspect of the requirement and the step requirement, uh, Mr. Berent? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, I suppose it's it's just one small point. I suppose reflecting back on on uh, comments made earlier in with regard to the step trajectory, and I think it it shows the lack of flexibility within the supply um, uh, that we mentioned before in terms of uh, we've moved from one uh, a flat trajectory to a step trajectory to, an either, uh, to another step trajectory in order to maintain um, a five-year land supply uh, from the adoption of the plan. Uh, it's a plan that should be flexible as required by uh, paragraph 11 of MPPF and uh, that flexibility isn't there. Uh, changes in the supplies uh, as come forward shouldn't necessarily require further step trajectories. Um, there should be sufficient supply within the plan to ensure that that can come forward without constant revisions to the step. So it, it's just a, a raising our concern on that matter, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Horner. Uh, yes, sir. Excuse my arithmetic, but uh, the, the 590, um, I don't quite understand where that comes from. So we've got a, uh, for the first five years, we have a total of 3,215 in Appendix 1, um, which if I divide by 5 is 643. So uh, am I missing something in translation of those figures? Uh, just perhaps I could just just to help and if, if I'm getting this wrong, please step in from the Council's point of view. But um, the figure, um, the, the Council have looked at what the anticipated supply is for the first five years, which is 3,215. Um, and then, so that would give an average average supply of 643, um, so that it, it's, the figure of 590 then comes from a five year requirement of 2,950. So it's it's an adjustment to, 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 to make okay. sure that the supply is greater than the requirement as it were yeah right. uh, and it's 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 to factor in the need for to to maintain a five percent buffer in that period okay um and then just i mean i've made this point before so to mr barrett's i mean there's nothing to stop as i understand it there's nothing to stop house builders building faster than the council's trajectory they could bring forward sites presumably Wherever they are assumed in the in the trajectory, they could bring those forward earlier if they wanted. You know, there must be that flexibility in the plan. Yes, I mean that's that's the that's the common approach. Yes, that um, the sites once they're permitted, you know, obviously there are some exceptions, but generally development rates come forward at, 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 at the yeah. as they do. There's no there will be no restriction. I don't understand this point. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Toft, do you want to add something there? 
Um, yes, thank you, sir. Um, just on the question of um, Appendix 1 and that middle row, I, I do get the number of um, 1,031 for that, uh, for that middle row. So, um, so I, I think it's a slight, um, uh, a slight overestimation by, by 11 um, homes. Okay. And, and I, I think it would need to be carried through to the, to the row at the bottom. Yeah. So if that's the case, that would make that bottom figure 4,650, take off 11, is that correct? Yes, and um, the, the figure on the right-hand row as well, I think, um, would, would need to come down to um, 1523 from 1534. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Berend. Thank you, sir. Um, it's just really in response to uh, uh, Mr. Horner and uh, 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 in terms of sites coming forward earlier in the plan period. Uh, this is the council trajectory in terms of what they're ex they expected uh, sites to come forward and how they expected the development to come forward. That would be based on um, the timing in terms of when applications would come forward, the rate at which you can actually build homes in terms of signing off uh, any pre-commencement conditions, all those elements will come in and factor in terms of the timescales. So it's not as simple as just saying, oh, we'll just bring more homes forward. It's about ensuring there's a flexibility in supply in terms of the type of supply, whether you've got small, medium and larger sites coming forward, which will all come forward at different paces at different points within, uh, within a plan period. So actually having a, uh, a variety of sites, uh, something the council has a, a, a large reliance on a single one single large site, which we don't agree, disagree with having that, but actually having those other sites that come in alongside that ensures you have a flexibility of supply. So should one element not uh, deliver as expected, then other sites are there to ensure that you do maintain that supply, whether it's a consistent supply across the plan period or your five year land supply. So it's not you can try and bring sites forward and that should be something that, that can be encouraged. But actually this is the council supply uh, estimates based on conversations I assume with the development industry and those people developing those sites they've allocated. So yeah, it, it's not as simple as, uh, as perhaps Mr. Corner is suggesting. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bailey. Thank you. Sir. Just um, to pick up on Mr. Berent's uh, Point about flex flexibility. Um, the council did last week submit to the examination um, a document setting out um, the evidence sat behind the SHLA and our land supply. Um, that is exam examination document EX051. Um, and that sets out um, the, the stages that the council has gone through through the preparation of the core strategy that's adopted the places and policies and the core strategy review uh, it sets out the call for sites processes and it looks at all the site submissions that have come forward in in that time and the council is uh, confident in that document that it demonstrates that the council has allocated all land that is available to it and that is deliverable and suitable for development so um it's, it's the council's view that we have allocated the the land that is available to us um, and that the district is obviously um, a very constrained uh, district as we've discussed in the past uh, which obviously is limiting opportunities for other sites to come forward thank you thank you okay um so in terms of uh a buffer, a percentage buffer to be applied. Um, the council's position is that five percent is appropriate, in line with the MPP, MPPF. Um, just, just a, just a quick recap in terms of the rationale for that from the council's point of view in terms of the evidence there. Yes, the the council is of the view that five percent is an appropriate buffer to be applied. The um, 
housing delivery test score for 2019 shows um, the council has achieved a score of 127% uh, deliveries against its requirements. Uh, therefore, it's the council's view that it's got a good track record of delivery against its targets, um, and therefore 5% is appropriate. I'd also add that uh, given the evidence that's obviously been submitted to the examination in terms of land supply, um, the council, um, there, there wouldn't be the supply um, to meet a higher, a higher buffer. Um, so I think it's a combination of the two. Okay. Okay. So um, in terms of calculating the requirement for that first five year period, um, if we take the, uh, the suggestion now of, a, of a, an annual uh, figure of 590 for the first five year period, um, applying a 5% buffer, that gives a requirement of 3,098 dwellings. Yes. That. yes, that's correct, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, if we can move on then to the, the supply side of the equation, as it were. So, um, turning to uh, the documents, um, EX053, I'm just looking at the appendices there. So, we have Appendix 1, which um, gives an overview of, of all supply. Um, and then we, that's followed by more detailed information about different sources. So if we could just work through um, each of those sources of supply and just ask the council to explain the figures and, and the, the justification for them and give others the opportunity to come in. Um, so we'll take them um, in the order on the agenda. So if we start uh, with uh, again, we're focusing on the five year period at this stage. We'll start with sites with planning, strategic sites with planning permission. So, as I understand it, we're looking at Appendix 4, Table 1. Is that correct? Bear with me. Just, just, just getting down to the correct part of the document. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm there now. Yeah. Okay. So I suppose first of all, just, just to confirm that the nature of this category of, of supply. So these are sites refer to as strategic allocations so therefore they they're allocated um, in the adopted core strategy um, or and and or this core strategy review um, but they also have uh, these are so these are just sites that are adopted in the core strategy these, there are no sites in this as part of the core strategy review, as far as I'm aware. Okay, I suppose, yeah, I suppose it depends on the interpretation of what this yep. plan does. Yes. <laughs> they are certainly, in some cases, included in the core strategy review, but yeah. 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 Okay, so they, they're, they're sites that are allocated in adopted core strategy, uh, they also have planning permission. Yeah. That's correct, yes. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of the figures, um, is there anything, if we perhaps, there are a fairly limited number, perhaps if we just go through each one and just, if you can just highlight the, the situation in broad terms with each of those strategic allocations. So if we start with the, um, the site at Folkestone. Okay, so yes, if we take the uh, what's what, what's uh, listed as former rotunda amusement park, that's so that that is uh, folks and seafront, which is policy SS10. So development on this site, um, 
commenced uh, in February 2020. And uh, the trajectory that is shown is that that's been provided by the site promoter. Mm -hmm. uh, the first phase um, is, say, is currently under construction and that's for 84 units. And the anticipated completion of those units is in uh, 2122. Um, in discussions with the uh, site promoter, uh, the council is um, aware that they are going to be bringing forward further reserve matters applications on uh, plots A and plots C of the master plan this year. So um, we have every confidence that the uh, uh, build out of this site will continue beyond the current reserve matters application uh, that's currently being implemented. Um, the higher um, completions uh, towards the end of the plan period represent uh, that moving eastwards, um, the densities in increase. Thank you. Okay. So um, we, we discussed this site in the earlier session, but the, the council's matter eight hearing statement originally had 40 completions in year 2021. Um, uh, yes, that's that's correct. Um, so the the trajectory that we received from um, the site promoter so showed uh, forty completions in in the year before, and then and then forty. Um, that's just been combined um, to reflect the reserve matters application that came forward, and uh, the understanding that all eighty four units within the apartment block will be released at. Um, a single point. So we've so we've just combined the figure from 2021 and 2122 to reflect say that 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 first stage. And obviously as as the development moves through um, and we and we get more clarity as to um, the number of units um, that will be delivered in each of the phases, then obviously we can keep a um, you know um, monitoring the trajectory um, and, and, and apply more certainty as, as, as the development moves forward. But as you can understand, this is a very large development over quite a, um, a, a long period of time. Okay, thank you. So um, the, the next site down um, is really SS11, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, so explain the figures there for us. Yeah. Yep. So, um, in terms of SS11, the completions for 2019 20 are the actual completions that have been recorded on site. Um, the trajectory is one that's been provided to us by Taylor Wimpy, who are currently implementing. Um, the permission. Um, at, the, at the point of last monitoring, um, there were 161, sorry, 167 dwellings recorded as currently under construction um, at Somerset Barracks and at Cherrington Place within the overall um, site area. So that should give confidence that you know, the, the the 117 uh, figure um, is is definitely going to be achieved for next year um, and it's just worth pointing out that uh, there are four uh, other reserved matters applications that have been approved for this site uh, which total another 431 dwellings that have full planning permission uh, which means that 75 percent of the scheme is fully consented. Um, so again, I think the the, the council can have um, and the inspectors can have uh, confidence in the trajectory that's being presented. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then the Nichols Quarry site. Okay, so yep, Nichols Quarry ag again. Um, this is a site that's been under construction, uh, I think, since twenty sixteen. Um, the completions for 1920 um, are what 
the council's recorded on site um, and is the completion of phase one of the development. Uh, phase two Two has reserved matters um, approved for 208 dwellings and that is under construction. Um, there's also um, a phase three um, reserve matters application for 70, which is, which is still to be determined. The trajectory, again, that's been, um, that, that is presented within the table is one that um, has been shared with us uh, by the site promoter. Um, so again, I think, I think we can have uh, confidence in in that trajectory. Um, obviously it shows that um, completions um, st step up um, from what's been achieved in earlier years. But my understanding of that is, is that the site's been undergoing um, a, a process of land raising. Uh, um, more, more land is now becoming available to be developed and the, and the developer will have the ability to build out um, more than sort of one site location within Within the overall allocation, which was a um, will justify those those higher figures towards the end of that trajectory. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Good. Do you want to come in on that? So, not not to add too much to that. Obviously, um, you, you you've seen our hearing statement. You know, you know the discussions we've had. Um, yeah, just just to agree generally with those uh, with that trajectory. Um, you'll, you'll note that we did slightly better last year than, than was originally anticipated with the 51 who was previously down at 40. Uh, so things are moving quite well at the moment. And yeah, we're, we're currently you'll be aware from our conversation pre-Christmas that uh, there is a, a further outline in at the moment as well, which is pending uh, determination. But hopefully we're, we're fairly confident that will be determined soon, uh, which will enable us to put in subsequent reserve matters. So. There's a 208, which is uh, reserve matters, which hasn't been fully built out yet, which is still going. There's a 70 in, which will be the first phase of the new outline, which is also in and pending consideration at the moment. So, um, I suppose the only point to make, sir, is you'll, you'll, and it, I, don't, I don't want to hark back to a, a previous session, uh, but you'll know the conversation we had about the, uh, it's down here as an allocation and, and we weren't down as that, but I know that's something the council is looking at further to our matter five conversation. So. Uh, not further to add to that, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, just just in terms of the numbers that um, would are anticipated to be delivered in in later years, we we move from um, completions of fifty one in in nineteen twenty, um, uh, rising above one hundred and, and peaking at one hundred and one hundred and sixty eight. Just the, the the realism of that. And, and why? What, what would what would sustain that level of completions? It is really comes down to being able to open further outlets. So whereas currently it's been constrained by the fact that we've had to do uh, land raising, etc., as, as the council referred to, as as most of that work is now largely underway or complete, uh, we will be able to once the subsequent reserve matters come in, and we'll be able to increase the number of outlets on the site and have multiple outlets working at the same time. So gives us a fair, uh, a much greater opportunity to raise those numbers uh, throughout the plan period. And, and hence, you know, four or five years from now, we'll hopefully have several reserve matters in place, which will allow them all to be building out at the same time, sir. Okay. And indications so far in terms of um, market demand, et cetera, we're confident that that's a realistic um, delivery rate in terms of the the demand for houses in that particular location? Yes, I mean, as I say, we, we, we've already overshot what we initially anticipated this year, not, not vastly so, but through a tough year, I think that's that's quite um, quite encouraging. And we expect, again, to overshoot the 40 uh, that's currently in there. So I, I don't see a problem with that. So and hopefully as as things emerge out of the current issues we're in, then um, there's, a, there's a certain amount of pent up demand out there, which will hopefully be fulfilled fairly quickly. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, then we have the other two sites, sorry, three sites, which is taking them at uh, the site at, at New Romney. Yep. So um, the first of the New Romney sites, the uh, Romney Marsh Potato Company site, uh, that is now completed. Um, that was the final, the final uh, unit was uh, recorded as completed in 2019 20. So that's been fully built out. Um, and then the site directly opposite um, door.
but it's like every confidence that that site will be completed um next year or or this or yeah the next monitoring year with this monitoring year Okay, and then that takes us to um, the surgery site at Selinge, which we discussed. Yep, so this site, again, is, is currently being built out by Tay Taylor Wimpy. Phase one uh, was recorded as being completed in 2019-20 with uh, 50 units. Um, at the point um, of monitoring last year, another 45 units were currently being shown as under construction um, based, based on um, that information past completion rates on this site and at um, the other Tidal Wimpy site in Folkestone. Um, we believe that the trajectory that's being provided by the developer um, is, is justified and, and, will be, and will be delivered. I think it's also just important to point out that in the um, joint delivery statement for the garden settlement um, that Taylor Wimpy had expressed that sales in this area were exceeding expectations. So, so again, I think there's good market demand in this area and uh, good progress is being made with the site. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, just moving on in the trajectory then, um, this category of sites with permission, uh, this is where it gets a bit confusing, with permission and <laughs> or under construction, sorry, and under construction, 10 or more units. So we have an appendix four table two, I think is the, the one to be looking at there, is that correct? Yes, that's yes. Yeah. Ten or more with uh, and and that and, and that includes uh, places and policies allocations that have permission. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not intending to go through sites individually um, for for the main reason that there are quite a few and it's, it would take a long time to get through. <laughs> yes. um, so I'm probably happy to deal with it in terms of the overview of of the supply from from those sites, unless there's any particular. Uh, particular sites that you, you want to highlight from the council's perspective? Um, now, I think the, the the trajectory for these sites, again, I think we can have uh, confidence in, in these um, by the nature that they're under construction. Um, the council is undertaking annual monitoring of these sites. Um, when we go out and, and take a look, we we do um, consider sort of the stage of construction that the uh, dwellings are at, so which gives us a, a, a more accurate picture when, when, when profiling these sites. Um, but we also, for some of the larger sites, say um, like the uh, former St Mary's Bay Holiday Village or um, the uh, land at Hurricane Way, uh, land adjoining the pumping station, um, we do contact the land uh, promoter or, or, or site developer and try and get um, an, an accurate up-to-date picture of the site um, and onward trajectory for their delivery. So um, yeah, no, I, again, I think I, I think we can have uh, confidence that these sites are are coming forward um, as as profiled. Yeah. Okay. So the the total figure that we have for that particular category is 478. Uh, yes, that's correct. With 102 completions in that category this year. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we move on to sites with planning permission, 10 or more units, but not started. That's the next category. Again, not intending to go through individual sites unless there's any particular things to highlight from your perspective. 
bear with me. Uh, no, I've got, I haven't got, I haven't got any sites that I sort of need to draw out in particular. Um, but again, these these are largely um, informed by um, discussions with site developers. Um, if um, if 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 we don't get a steer um, or 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 get a response from the developer, then we obviously look at um, when the uh, permission was um, gr granted, and we make an allowance um, you know, that we or we make the assumption that the site would come forward before the end of before the end of that um, expiry period. Okay. So these these are sites with permission. Are they do they all have full permission or something like that? Um, I believe they all have full permission. These sites. Okay. And in terms of the lead-in times for them, um, just looking through the list, the, you're anticipating some completions for 2021, 22, on some sites. Yeah. Is that realistic in your view? Um, yes, yeah, so definitely for um, the land adjacent to 49 AD Road and um, 11 Church Street, um, I would have confidence in those sites coming forward. Um, we, maybe um, the land rear of uh, Church and Dwight Caesars Way, um, uh, that might be pushed back a year. The council is owner of that site and is in uh, discussions with Homes England um, for funding for that site in terms of remediating that and is entering um, or um, looking to go into a joint venture with a developer uh, to bring those sites forward. So, that, so there potentially could be, there could be um, a year, a year's flex in that site. So that would push um, the, the start of completions into 2022 stroke 23. Yes, I, th I think that might be sort of a, 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 a more um, accurate position for that site. Yeah, um, and, and just to sort of add in that we, for, for sites um, that are, um, that have permission but uh, not under construction, we have the non-implementation discount that we that we apply um, the five percent to make an allowance for for sites that may not come come forward within uh, sort of the anticipated period. So just looking, following that table through, uh, the total in the five year period was 184. Um, that would need to be adjusted if you, if you move the, the site at Folkestone a year back. Um, notwithstanding that, you're then factoring in a 5% reduction, um, which brings the, the total estimate to 175. Yeah. Okay. So That's fine. I can follow that through. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so look at the figures for that one. Okay. Uh, Mr. Buckley. Thanks, sir. Um, Mr. Bailey has partly answered the question. It's I noticed that it's not just this table, but quite a lot of tables. We have basically the notes to say it is an estimation of when a site will come forward, um, and really it's just understanding the basis on which that estimation is made. Is it an optimistic, a pessimistic? what they may call a realistic view of how that site may come forward. It's just so there's, it's just a statement, but there's no real evidence behind it to say how that conclusion has been arrived at. Thanks, sir. Okay, Mr. Bailey, perhaps you could shed some light on, on how you've arrived at those assumptions. Well, 
we're um, obviously we're in the table. I've got um, agent developer um, in in intelligence. That's 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 where the council has spoken directly to the um, site promoter um, or developer and um, got their um, position on the site in terms of um, timescales to attain planning um, and and to bring the site forward for de delivery where we have estimations um, so we, whilst we contact as many uh, site developers and site promoters as possible we don't necessarily always get a hundred percent response to our um, inquiries for updated um, site positions and trajectories so we have to make a best estimation with the information that we have available to us. Um, um, we will have, uh, we will look at um, the dates that permissions were granted. We will consider the uh, site constraints um, associated with the with with the sites that might whether it's greenfield brown, brown, brownfield potentially what in, infrastructure might need to be brought forward to to try and um paint as accurate picture um as as possible uh, for those sites okay and as you said um that, that those sites in question have full planning permission okay. that's correct yes Thank you. Okay. So if we move on to um, smaller sites, so planning permission with sites of nine or less dwellings, um, first of all, taking the category under construction. So we're moving on to Appendix 4, Table 3. Um, again, a large number of sites and, and very small. So perhaps just a, an overview of the of the totality, unless there's any particular generic points you wish to make, then, Mr. Bailey. Uh, no, I think um, so. As you said, these are all these are all generally um, small sites, um, nine or under. The position, obviously, the 2019 20 figure is what's being recorded as. Um, being delivered um, and then using the monitoring information that we have, I think we've been able to accurately sort of plot the expected um, delivery of, of, of um, the outstanding units. Um, but overall, um, we're looking at approximately, not, not approximately, uh, 208 um, units currently within this category that will come forward within the first five years of the plan period. Uh, and of that, 127 have already been completed. Completed. That's correct, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And then moving on to the small sites, nine units with permission but not started again perhaps just an overview of the figures there i think this is obviously very similar to um how we go about the the larger sites um that have permission but but not start started it's a consideration of um, um of of site constraints and uh, looking at um when permissions were granted um, and making a reasonable estimation as to, to the likelihood of when those sites will come forward and, and deliver their completions. Okay. And um, equally, we, we, we will have uh, discussions with uh, case officers uh, that have processed those applications as well. And uh, are these all sites with full permission again? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, just moving down the table, the, the total 
um, in the five year period is 148, but then you've applied a 5% um, one implementation discount. Yep. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, if we could move back up then to um, the category of sites in terms of existing uh, allocations without permission. So we're looking at um, Appendix 3 tables one and two, I think. So we have um, table one, which sets out the uh, core strategy, the adopted core strategy allocations without permission. And um, then we've got table two, which looks at the PPLP allocations without permission. So if we just take the, the core strategy sites first. Yeah. Okay. Um so we've got two sites uh, within this category. Um, the first site is the other half of the broad location, which is land adjacent to All Hope, uh, to, to Hope All Saints Garden Centre, which is application Y181404. Um, outline uh, 1404 planning permission was granted for this site uh, back in August 2020. Um, the the site has recently been purchased by Pentland Homes, who have been developing out the uh, the other part of the broad location that's just, that's just coming um, to to an end. Um, they are or they have submitted a reserve matters application for this site, but that's uh, just awaiting validation. My understanding is that then these the developer is looking to move immediately onto this site um, on, on consent of that reserved matters ap application. Um, so we've assumed um, that that will be uh, determined in a timely manner and that the uh, that completions on the site will start say, fo fo following on from the completion of, um, of, of the other half of the New Romney board location uh, slightly 17 in in 21 22 uh, to allow for for various in, infrastructure to go in but then upping to uh, an average of 50 uh, completions for the following two years which is in line with their their rate of delivery um on on the other parts of the uh, broad location romney okay thank you Okay, so um, obviously a number of those sites are picked up in, in other categories, aren't they? Um, yeah, okay. So that, that gives us a total there, 142, okay. We can move on to the PPLP sites, yeah. Okay, uh, just bear with me a minute. Okay, so um, if we start with uh, policy UA1, which is the East Station Goods Yard, um, we've had discussions with the uh, case officer um, that's uh, overseeing um, this site. Um, they're currently just working through um, a, one or two final issues with the site, but um, the case officer has indicated to us that, um, a, that, that, that the site will be determined in, in between January and March of, of this year. So then we've um, allowed um, three years within that potential determination of the application for first completions on, on site. Okay, yeah, probably don't need to go through every individual site, yeah. but just the general principles here. So the, these are sites which are allocated in the recently adopted PPLP. Uh, they don't That's have, correct, yes. And have full planning permission at this stage. Um, 
So in terms of the time scales, um, the some sites are anticipated to start delivering. Well, I think there's one um, in 2020, 2021. Uh, let me just. Uh, the, the last. Uh, oh, RM15. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, this was. Um, a gypsy and traveller allocation um, that was uh, included in the places and policies local plan. Um, the application um, has, has been determined and um, it's a monitoring of sites. Um, we know that the site is 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 now completed, um, so um, that will be recorded as actual completions in in, in the next monitoring monitoring year that was uh, for five for five uh, sort of mo mobile homes yeah okay uh and then we have um a couple of sites at least anticipated completions in 2021 22 okay so, if, I, nine, if i just go through what is it so yeah ua9 is the first one there Okay, UA nine. Um, okay, yes, no, this is uh, the Brockman Family Centre in Folkestone. Um, the um, planning consent for this site was granted uh, last month, December 2020. Uh, the sale of the site is underway and um, to, to a developer and that is expected to be completed um, January or February of this month. Um, I had a discussion with the developer in the last couple of days and they've informed me that um, once they've uh, discharged the pre-commencement conditions, then they'll be looking to uh, get onto the site immediately. Um, and, and they have provided us with the anticipated um, completions um, in April, May, um, 2021. Okay. And then uh, the other site, the next site, shown completions in that year's UA sixteen Saint Saviour's Hospital. Yep. So, so this is this was a hybrid application that was approved um, last year uh, for fifty one units, but there was detailed consent for four, which is the conversion of um, one of the building, one of the existing buildings, on on site so um, you know, we've we've assumed that that will come forward in a timely manner whilst the reserve matters app, app application uh, is prepared and submitted on the remainder of the site okay thank you so in all of the cases um, for those pplp allocations without permission you're anticipating mm -hmm. Completions starting 2022, 23 or, or later in some cases. Yep. To, to start getting sort of significant um, um, completions from PPLP sites, yes. Um, I think I think the table de demonstrates that um, uh, there are a number of, of sites uh, that have permission or have permission um, or, or, or have applications uh, submitted on them and we've had quite detailed discussions with a number of the site promoters for these sites um, and we've had discussions say, with the case officers processing uh, the application so we've got a good understanding as to when a number of the sites that um, where, where there's an application submitted but not yet determined um, we, so we, we, we've, we've got a good understanding of, of the likelihood of um, what, the, what the determination will be and, and, uh, and, and, and when that decision will be taken. Okay. So, um, so the total figure for that category um, 
109. But then you've applied a 5% discount. To... That's correct, yes. Thank you. Okay, um, if we can move on then to the issue of windfalls and, and the allowance that's been made for dwellings coming forward on windfall sites. Um, we'll, we'll deal first of all with, with the figure of 95, but then we'll, we'll cover the, 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 the time period for that. Uh, uh, I know that the council is now suggesting that windfalls won't start contributing and, until a, a year later than previously. Estimate. But in justification from the figure of 95, if you could take us through that, please. Okay, so in, in the um, main matter, um, sorry, in, in the um, statement in response to uh, main matter eight, appendix five, uh, the council uh, sets out uh, three tables. Um, Table one, appendix five, uh, shows historical windfall completions uh, between 2006 uh, and seven and 2011-12. Uh, this is what was used to um, support the windfall allowance of 75 units uh, for the adopted core strategy. Um, then in terms of preparing um, the core strategy review, we've reviewed that um, and we've looked at um, and we've updated that table to reflect windfall completions between 2012-13 and 2018-19 um, and what we found was that the council is is uh, receiving um, quite a consistent steady rate of uh, larger windfall sites of be between five and nine units um, and we felt that the, the evidence was there to to support in, inclusion um, of those sites within our, our calculation as well. So between the period shown in table two, um, looking at the average for one to four units, um, it was 54 um, a year, and then uh, five to nine units was averaging 43 a year, um, which then um, just totaled... Um, 97 um, and then we sort of just round rounded that down to to 95 um, we do also obviously get quite a high um, rate of uh, windfall applications for 10 plus um, we, we obviously haven't uh, included those within our calculation but I, th I think um, a recent example of the type of windfalls that the council receives is that um, Last year, we had um, permission granted for uh, the Lees Pavilion in Folkestone, which was uh, another 91 um, apartments. So I, th I think we say with, 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 with quite significant windfall applications that come forward, um, we can have confidence in that figure. Um, in terms of um, allowance in the first five years, we've, with the revised trajectory, we've discounted uh, another year's worth of windfalls to allow um, for the fact that we've gone through the first year of monitoring. Um, so we've, we, we, we now have an understanding of, of say the, 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 the sites that have come forward um, within that, within that first year and, and, and applied those within the table. Um, but say then we've just discounted sort of the, the three years on from that point so that we uh, avoid any double counting. Okay. Um, in terms of the rationale for the figure of 95, um, as you say, you making reference to the, the tables in Appendix 5, um, would it not be the case, though, that um, past trends in windfalls would have maybe been influenced by the, the absence of an, an up-to-date adopted allocations plan? So... As the point being that you, you now have a, you've gone through the process of preparing and adopting the PPLP, which um, looks, which uh, allocates uh, a, quite a large range of sites, some of which um, are relatively small scale. So it, is there not the case to be had there that um, some of the sites that may well have been windfalls in the past 
um, have now been absorbed into the allocation process and that may affect future trends? Um, no, I, I, I think that um, say, I don't think they'll necessarily um, have an effect on projected windfalls. Um, the work that we've that that we've done um, looking in future years um, would would suggest that 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 trend would continue. Um, Say so I've given reference to um, the Leeds Pavilion ap application as as an example of large windfalls that um, are still coming forward within um, regardless of. Um, the adoption of the plan. There's also um, work um, with with recent changes to um, permitted development rights, um, employment, um, office, and 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 retail um, units can come forward for conversion to C3 units. So we 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 feel that there's potential for for that that rate of um, windfalls to to continue. Okay, just um, Appendix Five, Table Three. You've got yep. some for projected windfall completions. Um, how does that how does that relate to the fact that you you don't have an allowance for windfalls in in those years? Is there some are those figures absorbed somewhere else? So, for example, you have projected windfalls um, in twenty 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 one. Yeah, yes. So, 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 what we've done there is 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 we 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 went through each of those those years and um, considered which of the applications that were listed um, within the trajectory table reflected um, wind windfall. So, sites that we we wouldn't have been aware of coming forward. So, in our view, that they were sort of the windfalls that we haven't um anticipated within the first three years to avoid the double counting okay okay so they're in uh, those figures are included in the trajectory but they're presumably absorbed in um, sites with planning permission that's correct yes sir okay thank you so that 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 table would have been um, updated uh, will be updated to reflect the revised tra trajectory. But having had a look at it, we um, the the figures are still consistent with achieving that ninety five uh, figure. Okay. And you you pointed uh, just a moment ago to, to to a couple of factors that that may sustain a level of windfall developments um uh, changing of use of commercial premises example um in terms of the overall policy framework you're, you're satisfied that the, the the development plan allows for um developments for example within within built up areas to continue to come forward uh, yes and uh the council's just embarking on a town centre regeneration strategy as well for Folkestone, which um, will will look at increasing uh, residential capacity potentially within within the town centre. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Um, That was the easy bit. Now we'll move on to the uh, strategic allocation. Uh, so yeah, the, the 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 final category and and by far the most important in terms of the the numbers. Um, the core strategy review allocations um, without planning permission, um, which we're looking at um, appendix two. Um, so perhaps perhaps we can deal with the, with Selinge first of all, and we'll come on to the to the garden settlement itself. We we discussed Selinge um, last week. Perhaps we yeah. just that. Yeah. So if we take uh, the phase two site A uh, site first of all, um, so we had a, a discussion about this last week on Friday. Um, 
we ha there has been an application, um, as you were made aware of, uh, that's been submitted on part of that site for 55 dwellings, and that's directly adjacent to the site that's currently being built out for phase one. Um, as you were made aware, the, um, the d ongoing sort of master planning works being done with that site and the developers having discussions with the wider, with the wider um, site owners. So whilst we haven't got um, so a, a permission in, in, in place for that, we've, we've, alloc we've um, pro pro profiled sort of the f that 55 um, coming forward from 24, 25, but I think it would be, I, I, I think it could be reasonable to assume that, it, that that part of the site could come forward in advance of that, but we've just taken a sort of conservative approach um, mm -hmm. as we have done sort of with the remaining um, um, part of that uh, site A land where we just applied sort of a, a continuous uh, supply of 20 units a year so just to reflect um not the uncertainty but the fact that we we haven't got the information necessarily to um put together like a really accurate picture for that site at the moment and there's obviously um so there was discussion about um wastewater management and so forth with that site so again that that's why we've allowed um, a little bit more time with that site and push that back beyond the first five years. Okay. And then site B. Yes, so so this was the um, land behind Rhodes House in Selinge. Um, there's um, an outline planning permission that's been granted on that site. That was in uh, February. 2019. Um, as you heard from Mr. Waterhouse on, on, on Friday, um, they're looking to put forward reserved matters um, on that site, uh, either this month or next. Um, and that this site would could build out within three years. Um, I've had discussions with um, the potential developer for that site and they'd be looking to bring that forward um, at an accelerated rate with uh, two um, SME builders um, um, going on, on on the site delivering uh, up to six units um, a week I think a, a month maybe um, so that so that so, so those figures reflect um, that position of uh, anticipated planning and from the uh, developer looking to bring forward the site um, against their um, projected tra trajectory. So in terms of how the different uh, elements of, of the selling strategy fit together in terms of timing, the, 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 the surgery site is uh, anticipated to be nearing completion as it were, that would be followed on by- Yes. Like the, and then Followed on by the first part of site A and then the second part. So there's that's, a, there's a that, that's there. correct. Yes, it, so it, it it sort of allows for a sort of a, or, or or considers a a, a consistent uh, level of build out at Selinge over the plan period. Okay. And the the overall annual rate is is realistic in terms of what's been achieved so far. On the surgery side, uh, I think so. Yes, they so, say so the surgery side is is looking to um, or, or or has been delivering uh, fifty last year, and then say so they're well on course to deliver the 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 sixty five that's projected this year. Um, so I think the figures that are uh, profiled for site B are consistent with that given that um, say the developers are looking to bring it forward or the subprimators are looking to bring it forward with two SME borders um, uh, um, simultaneously. Yeah okay thank you. Okay we'll move on then to the new garden settlement. Um, again appendix two sets out the figures. 
Um, we we did uh, look at their trajectory when we discussed uh, the New Garden Settlement um, in its own right, but just wanted to, to go over things again, just not least for the benefit of those who weren't uh, at that previous session. Um, so in terms of the five-year period, um, first five-year period, we, the council's anticipating one year of completions of 121 um, units. Um, I think we'll probably, if we can deal with a new garden settlement, um, I suppose as a, as a totality in terms of the, the, the overall trajectory, then we won't need to keep coming back to it. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through the, the whole whole trajectory for it. Um, so I suppose, first of all, in terms of the time scale for first completions, um, Council's indicating 2023, 20, 24, and 121 being completed on that time period. If you could just recap for us in terms of the, the rationale behind that time scale, given where we are with um, the plan and, and the planning application. Okay, yes. So um, the trajectory, as you say, shows uh, first completions in 23-24. That um, is based on the trajectory that's been shared with us by uh, the site promoters for the garden settlements. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, um, you know, the council is in the knowledge that the um, planning application has been prepared alongside the uh, core strategy review, um, that the planning application is uh, structured in a three-tier um, system, which um, means that the, the tier one is the outline uh, planning application, which was submitted uh, back in uh, and, and validated in February 2019. Uh, that is uh, obviously currently with the local planning authority for determination and um, is, and it, as you were updated last week, could be uh, determined um, shortly after a, a, a positive uh, steer or report in regards to this um, core strategy review. Simultaneously, the developer um, or promoter has been working up on uh, design codes and master planning, uh, which uh, will shorten the uh, plan period, um, the, 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 the plan making process um, for reserve matters. Um, and uh, sorry, sorry, I've lost my switch on the train. Um, and, and, and that is consistent with um, what's been um, published in various literature on accelerated uh, delivery through the um, Litchfield um, start to finish study, which looks at sites of 2000 or more and uh, assumes that delivery can be uh, achieved within five years of a, a, a uh, application being validated. So, so we're, we're within those timescales um, and also the, um, the inspector for the North Essex authorities um, concluded in regards to that e examination that again, the, um, the plan making process, the, uh, the decision making process could be shortened by um, advanced work on master planning and design codes. So I think um, that has a significant impact on the uh, lead-in period for that site, but also that the site um, benefits from um, good infrastructure that's already in place um, with, a, the, with the high, high, highway infrastructure and the A20, which enables um, quick access to the uh, initial initial build built building plots so it's minimal infrastructure would be required um, to in in order to achieve first completions thank you thank you um yeah i mean uh, we, we raised the 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 issues of, of infrastructure and phasing and, and the council is um we understand producing some some further information on that, but but it, you made the point there that um, as things stand, 
in terms of infrastructure, access arrangements, et cetera, the, the, the work could start on site and, and completions could take place relatively early, subject to permission, obviously. Is there a point in time and a point in the phasing program where um, there is there becomes an issue in terms of the need for additional infrastructure um, on top of what's there already? What, what, what point would that be that that may start to affect delivery. Uh, just bear with me. Can I just uh, just have a quick chat with a colleague? Sorry about that. Yeah, um, just having a chat with uh, my colleague. Um, the council is of the view that the say the infrastructure um, would be in place. That um, we have the potential for the modular uh, wastewater treat treatment works. There's also headroom in the um, utilities infrastructure, pot potable water. Um, so we don't necessarily see. Uh, there being a constraint in terms of infrastructure for the initial phases of the uh, garden settlement, but maybe I could defer to uh, Chris Wheaton if he's if, if he can add anything further to that. Yeah, Mr. Wheaton. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm probably not the person to talk about uh, detailed technical points uh, on that. Um, I mean, I suppose the only thing I would add is, uh, um, as we mentioned before, the the council has already set aside. Um, funding for the infrastructure. So uh, there's 100 million pounds in total. Um, and that decision was made aligned to a, a, an infrastructure delivery plan, really, that looks at peak funding requirements over uh, the first five years of the scheme, but also uh, uh, kind of using that as a, a recycling fund, if you like. So as land receipts come in and, and pay some of that initial infrastructure spend back, it then gets expended on more infrastructure. So um, I can certainly say that the infrastructure requirements over the life of the scheme are fundable by the, uh, the sums the council set aside. Um, I think if you want more detail on exactly when those different infrastructure items come on board, um, I'd probably need to get a, uh, a colleague from Arcadis to submit some details on that. Yeah, it was more really just um, the, the view of, uh, Mr. Mr. Bailey made the point that um, subject to permissions that, that development could commence and completions could could st could start to be seen relatively early because of uh, the, the ability of the existing infrastructure to require that. Is there a broad figure that you're able to give us in terms of how much how much could be developed um, essentially on the basis of existing infrastructure or without any significant additional infrastructure costs? Where, where would that, how, how far would that first phase take you, I suppose, in terms of the numbers? Uh, it's probably better if I, um, apologies, as I say, that is um, our kind of infrastructure engineers from Arcadius who are on, uh, on the call today. I can, um, do you want me to look it up and, and answer it just yeah. after our first break? That'll be helpful, yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Mr. Tofts. Um, I wonder if I could bring in my colleague, um, Mr. Hammond, at, at this point. Uh, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, 
morning, sir. Mm. Uh, I think effectively the um, the headroom capacity for early delivery of residential units will be borne out with the additional infrastructure work that the council is due to provide you uh, in the next. Um, it's a matter of days, really, but there is scope for uh, the early delivery of um, housing units out of the pool, the garden settlement, without an unnecessary infrastructure burden to uh, to carry forward. So, for example, there could be um, early uh, delivery of a number of units without investment in highway infrastructure. There's also been a fairly detailed discussion about early delivery of primary school to set the place shaping agenda uh, such like and that's Mr Wheaton um, alluded to there is that drawdown facility so uh, the intention of um, the council is to clearly define the infrastructure delivery on a phase-by-phase -phase basis but the starting point will be to say well what is the headroom across all of those infrastructure items so effectively could, could there be drop-in applications um, up front that don't require the uh, the triggering of key infrastructure and and my assumption is that there could be um, notwithstanding the fact that that early infrastructure investment it will be critical to uh, the success and continued delivery of um, of residential units and also the potential for accelerated delivery as well can you give us a, a figure for, um, I suppose, an approximate figure at least for the number of dwellings that, that could be completed without significant infrastructure provision? Um, early delivery, I suppose, is what we're looking at here. I think so. It would be it, it would be sensible for us to confer with Arcadis. It's something that we can certainly um, assemble quickly. But I would not want to mislead you on on those figures. So, as Mr. Wheaton has said, that it, there's an opportunity to um, have some dialogue with the infrastructure people from Arcadis, uh, and we can come back and, and clarify that point for you. So, I think uh, this will become clear when we finish our note on infrastructure for you, um, and we can give you some some harder figures then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mr. Horner. Yes. Yeah, so, could I just point out that this. Uh, this early phase of Osborne Park development is going to depend very much on how the project is managed as a whole. For example, if in phase one, um, the master developer was to uh, put in the roads, for instance, and certain other basic infrastructure before going out to the market and bringing in developers, house builders and other people to um, to build out the town centre, um, then there's inevitably a, a long leading period. Uh, whereas if, for example, the developer was the master de developer was to take on a more hands on approach and if you like bring forward the fundamental infrastructure within the site at the same time as um, buildings were being advanced, then that would be a different matter. Um, so it'd be interesting to see whether how phase one is going to be brought forward uh, has actually been decided by the master developer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Wheaton, do you have anything else to add? Just to answer very briefly on that one. Um, so uh, we, we've already had a lot of dialogue with um, potential partners to deliver phase one um, and that uh, is likely to include uh, both for sale uh, for private rent uh, and affordable homes. Mm -hmm. um, we've scheduled within the program uh, next year a formal procurement uh, process to appoint those partners uh, of which it's likely to be three or four uh, to deliver the initial phase. Um, and I think to kind of answer your point it is uh, it is a master developer putting, putting down strategic infrastructure, um, but due to the points we've already heard in terms of road access, etc., that can happen in parallel with house builders starting to build out the first plots. Um, and then, as we've said, the uh, uh, initial works of the A20 conclude before the first residential occupations and the uh, primary school uh, is completed in the uh, September after the, the first residential occupation. So uh, hopefully that kind of answers that query. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Berendt. Thank you, sir. I really just wanted to say I, I 
uh, we made comments on the time at which the uh, the development would start, and uh, pleased to see that actually some so the changes have been made since the uh, since the plan was submitted in terms of uh, pushing back the start date uh, and reducing the number in terms of phasing that coming forward. And as such, we uh, we wouldn't have any problems in terms of the uh, the approach that's been taken with regard to the start of the. Uh, 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 the garden settlement and, and when it would come forward. I think we we do, and, and it's the same point made for concerns actually uh, that it is ambitious in terms of its overall uh, delivery, and how then that's that that's phased in in terms of the, the the significant proportion of overall development that is is coming forward on the garden community and and how that's offset going forward in into the future. But in terms of the delivery rates uh, that, that are being proposed, then uh, then uh, then our concern seems to have been addressed, especially in the early phases of uh, of the development. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was going to move on. Uh, as I said, we'll, we'll deal with a new garden settlement in terms of the, the whole trajectory, I think, in, in one go. Um, I was going to move on to um, look again at the, the, the issue of the, the annual rate of development. Um, perhaps this, will, this is a good time to take a break before we, we move on to that. So um, if we can take a break and I think if we can resume at, uh, we'll make it 11.30 to resume the session. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Milam, did you? I had a very, very quick uh, question I just wanted to raise. It was probably better to raise it now while we weren't too far away from it. But um, we, we had a bit of discussion at the new garden settlement session on the progress of the planning application. And there was uh, an update from a member of the team in terms of a fairly major revisions package expected at some point in summer. Um, and inevitably, there'll need to be some kind of further consultation on that with a view to the council um, determining it by the end of the year. My, my question really was around Highways England um, and their views on the application vis-a-vis. -vis. Is there any um, direction uh, that's been said to the council that the application can't be determined before a certain date? Um, I'll ask James Hammond to, to answer that. It's not been signified uh, as part of uh, ongoing discussions, but we'll certainly provide you with uh, clarity on that. Thank you. Yeah, um, that was all for me. Otherwise, okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. We'll we'll take a break and we'll we'll resume at eleven thirty. As I said, we'll move on to to look at the uh, the anticipated annual rate of development for the New Garden Settlement. So we'll resume at eleven thirty. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Welcome back. Um, it's 11.30 and time to resume the session. Can I just check, you can still see and hear me okay, Caroline? Everything's fine, thank you, Inspector. Okay, thank you. Uh, good, uh, we'll move on then to um, specifically look at the uh, the rate of the annual rate of development anticipated at the new garden settlement. Um, so again, we'll be taking um, the latest figures produced by the council um, in the document EX053. Um, so if I could turn to the council first of all. So we, we've dealt with the, the start um, the start date for completions. Just wanted to, to look at the, the numbers involved. Um, Again, this is something we, we went through on, on the specific session, but um, very useful. Mr. Wheaton, did you have something to add before we start there? Well, I was just going to say I can answer that um, infrastructure question in summary if you'd like to do that at the start now. or yes, That would be helpful, yes, thank you. Yeah. Great. Um, so, uh, as, as, as we said, there, there is a detailed document the council, I think, will be provided, providing, but just as an overview, in terms of uh, infrastructure required before we can deliver any homes, um, it's fairly limited. It falls um, under uh, an electoral substation and also some works to the A20 and the Newing Green Junction. Uh, those works are programmed to start in April 2023 and take nine to 12 months. So that will uh, enable the um, first completions in early 2024. Um, so that's really everything we need to start delivering. Um, in terms of when we sort of then hit the next major infrastructure requirement, um, that really comes at about 1,500 homes, uh, which is driven by uh, water capacity. Um, I can also just very quickly talk through now kind of the key triggers under each of the headings. Um, we, so, sorry, can we just, just go back to the first point you made there about the, there are some, as you described them, limited works needed prior to any completions. So um, substation, some some highway works. Yeah. Yeah. The time scale for that, can you just tell me that again? So it's um, programme starting April 2023 uh, and complete in uh, well, nine, nine to 12 months from there. So that, that's to enable oh. occupations, I should say, is probably the right term. Uh, so that will happen in parallel with um, house building works. So April 2023, um, for those infrastructure works to start, and it would take nine to 12 months to be completed. Yeah. So that would take us up until... Um, the end of the year 2023-24 before those that initial infrastructure work is complete potentially. Yeah so and that kind of aligns with first occupation so the house building work is programmed to start at the beginning of 2023 um, so around March um, and then first home is being delivered around a year after that. So uh, is there would there be any impediment to those those first uh, that first phase of housing being completed prior to that infrastructure or is it the occupation of the houses that's the critical point it's occupation yeah okay yeah thank you it really it really is quarter one um 2024 when occupations can commence okay yeah Okay, um, so I was just going to give a, a quick sort of headline as to when the first major trigger is for each type of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, so starting in terms of highways, um, there's no sort of further major items until 1,900 units, um, which is when an upgrade to Ottable Lane is required. Um, there are then further uh, sort of highway triggers throughout the scheme at two and a half thousand units, um, and then four or five and six thousand units. Um, in terms of on-site highways, they're essentially delivered in a in a phase manner throughout the scheme. Um, in terms of uh, utilities, as I said, the key thing is the 
uh, water reinforcements that are required beyond 1,500 units. Um, everything else is really able to be delivered in, in a phased manner throughout the scheme in terms of utilities. Um, on education, as we said, the first primary school is planned to be delivered up front. Uh, beyond that, there'll be a requirement every five to 800 homes for a primary school. Uh, and on secondary schools, the first one will be delivered um, between two and 3,000 homes. Um, and then finally, I think just on health, the uh, first sort of key trigger will be 1,000 homes for a full kind of GP facility. Um, prior to that, it will be um, temporary uh, provision. I think that's kind of the, the, the first trigger under each heading, really. Okay, thank you. So uh, I'm assuming that, that that information will be contained um, in the note we're getting from the council. Yes, it will. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Horner. Yes, I, I'd just like to say, um, mulling over at um, while I was having my coffee, um, some things that Mr. Wheaton said just before we broke mm -hmm. about uh, four or five partners in phase one. Um, I do have some experience in the early stages of developing a new town, albeit four times the size of um, Gospel Park. And um, I've got to say that the only way that worked was by having a single contracting, managing contractor to um, take care of all of the common infrastructure around the site, the roads, and the, uh, and the utilities had to go in within the site. Um, Mr. Wheaton's talked about the infrastructure outside the site. Um, I worry that um, if, the, uh, if the management of the construction is uh, from a, a small organisation like Ottawa Park LLP itself and then devolved to four or five partners as, he, as he's um, alluded to, then um, it's going to be very difficult to manage a site of this size and to bring on this housing um, particularly in the early days, as quickly as he says. Okay, thank you. So that's not quite the case, actually, because um, uh, as you know, the, the council's, as landowner, um, it, its delivery company is going to act as master developer. Uh, so that, that um, I mentioned will be present. Okay, thank you. Um, well, if I could, uh, and I've not seen any indication that the LLP itself is taking on the sort of people who can deliver this um, from a, an engineering point of view. I've put my engineering hat on here. Um, so the project that I worked on, uh, um, well, it will be a decade ago, um, really got going once a management contractor was appointed by the um, the management and they got their teeth into it and then the, the, the project really got started. Okay, thank you. Good, um, okay, it, looking at the, the annual uh, rate of anticipated completions then, um, the, the council's rationale for um, the, 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 the the numbers involved, um, which peak, um, as far as the latest figures are concerned, um, peaking at five, five, seven, but, but a period of time where consistently um, at or above 500 completions per, per year. Um, the rationale for that, um, perhaps in summary, we, we did go through this before, but again, just, just for the benefit of those who weren't there. So just, I suppose, the overall rationale for anticipating that that level of completions on an annual basis from the council. Is that spe specifically between 20, 29, uh, 30 to uh, 33, 34 you're looking at? Or the, or the, or the well, whole I, trajectory? I think, I think the whole trajectory, yep. yeah, but, yeah. but really, um, you know, the most the most scrutiny falls in, in terms of those very high numbers. But I suppose just just an overview of, of the of the scale of annual completions that is anticipated and 
the justification for for anticipating that those those very high numbers by by any comparison really i think um sorry uh, without wishing to repeat what we've already said in relation to this it's a very large site mm -hmm. um it has um fantastic accessibility um and is big enough to support several um national house builders developing out of different parts um uh, at different times uh, at the same time um with uh, most of the necessary uh, infrastructure surrounding the site being in place and, and ready um, to, to go. Um, it means essentially that coupled with other um, housing delivery vehicles, for example, specialist housing, C3, et cetera, uh, it's gonna be possible on a site of this size actually to deliver um, um, those kinds of figures. Uh, and I think we also drew attention to the fact that even in relation to garden village type proposals, uh, which are much smaller, um, um, delivery rates anticipated in the order of about 250 to 300 uh, on various examples around the country now being promoted. So it's a figure which is, I think, um, certainly commensurate with the size of the site um, and the fact that it can accommodate um, several developers at once. Okay. It is also, of course, the only, um, it's the main um, centre for delivery of housing, particularly in the later years. Um, so it's going to be a primary focus um, as a means of meeting demand. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wheaton, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just to expand uh, very briefly, I think it's worth also just noting that the council has undertaken an incredible amount of work in terms of formulating the housing strategy. Um, that's included surveying local people who live near the site. So we've um, surveyed over 500 households looking at their future housing needs. Uh, and about 25% of those have some sort of need to, to change. Um, we've also met 43 local businesses um, we've also mapped out the key workers who will need to run the things like the schools and health provision on site, uh, which is about 1600 jobs. So aside from kind of the general needs identified in the, in the Shmar, um, there has also been a huge amount of site specific work and we've really aligned the, the types and tenures of homes we're delivering to the affordability and requirements um, coming out of that work, I suppose. Um, so overall, we do have uh, 13 tenures of homes proposed. So that's far wider than uh, most past developments. Um, and some of those are, are things that will have been seen before, um, such as shared ownership. But some of them are things like um, council housing delivery, which obviously hasn't been seen for, for many years um, directly by the council. Um, things like build to rent. So institutionally funded, uh, professionally managed um, private rented sector homes, which again, you know, none of the reports uh, in terms of the Litchfield's report or, or um, Letwin uh, really included bills to rent because it just wasn't a thing then. Uh, um, and we've had very positive conversations with um, kind of pension fund type partners in terms of delivering that. Um, we've also got um, uh, elderly care accommodation, uh, both private and affordable. Um, and we've got things like intermediate rent as well. And we've also worked with the council's economic team on um, some live work provision and, and some provision aligned to the creative industry. So um, I think we genuinely do have a much more diverse type of housing we're delivering here, um, which you know all of the evidence points to that being um, the way to accelerate delivery. And then, um, just briefly moving on to, to kind of who's delivering it and how. Um, I would agree it is a high number per year, but when you start to break it down into different types of operators, it, it looks quite sensible. So um, we'd be looking at um, between one and four volume house builders on site at any one time, and they would um, be delivering between 50 and 100 homes per year each. And that sits comfortably with market testing we've done with volume house builders uh, and also with um, annual completions per year um, of annual house builders on average outlets. Um, we then have um, kind of two or three 
SME type builders, um, uh, also delivering perhaps 30 homes per year each. And again, that, that sits comfortably with um, our engagement with those type of providers locally, uh, including some of the ones that, that are already building out um, other plots we've spoken about in, in the wide house and lands by this morning. Um, we'd have a build to rent operator, which is quite a, um, quite a su substantial um, component of the delivery here. And that's anticipated at around 80 dwellings per year. Um, and then we'd have uh, an elderly care provider uh, around 30 dwellings per year. And then, um, as I said, a range of kind of affordable housing, um, including uh, around 50 homes per year once we get going from uh, the council's own approved um, council house booking program. So none of those um, numbers kind of look, look problematic uh, in themselves. It does add up to a big number, but it's a big site with a lot of different sales out outlets. Um, so that's just kind of us with a little bit more detail on, on why we're doing it and, and who's doing it really. Okay. The, um, the, the proposals have, have been in formulation for, for some time, um, clearly, and um, I just, just perhaps just wanted to refer you and the council officers to, to a couple of, of things to, to compare with, really. Um, the, um, the, the statement from uh, CPRE includes uh, reference to the, the housing delivery strategy um, from the, the Otterpool Park application. So um, just, just in terms of that, 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 that admittedly dates back to January 2019, um, but that, that indicated a, a range of, of housing delivery, uh, a, a lower range, uh, upper range. The, 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 the peak of the upper range is 450 units per annum. Um, just uh, allied to that, um, in response to our uh, initial questions to the council, um, the response we received in May of 2020, I think it was, yeah. Um, so we, we asked for some clarification as far as the delivery and trajectory were concerned. So the council's position as of May of, of 2020, in terms of the trajectory, again, um, envisages completions peaking only only at the end of the plan period uh, peaking at 450 so perhaps you could just explain what what's changed since those assessments were made that um, there was an estimate that the, the 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 upper end of delivery would be 450 units per year now now the view is that the upper end will be in excess of 550 what, what's changed since then Should I start with that one or with the yeah, council? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I think um, so. When that that original housing strategy was submitted, um, the council's housing team reviewed that, and really one of the I, I suppose um, helpful comments that came back in relation to that was, um, how does this fit the local area? Um, how is the housing delivery supporting the kind of sense of place and the placemaking um, and how will it be a sustainable community um, that prompted some additional work um, which was undertaken in uh, 2020 um, and some of that I referred to earlier so it prompted a local housing needs survey um, which was really all about looking at the um, five um, parishes most um, adjacent to the site and understanding their housing needs and ensuring that um, we provided things like um, you know um, intermediate homes for people who are currently living with their parents and, and need to move out um, uh, there was a lot of requirement for elderly housing or adaptable housing for people who had uh, kind of mobility issues and things and, and needed to move so that work un informed a, a change and then I suppose the other half to that was the um, how does it create a sustainable new settlement and that prompted some more work on um, as I say um, who, who is going to run um, schools health etc how much are they earning um, what types of homes are they going to need so we sort of reformulated the housing strategy a little bit having undertaken that further work um, 
and that resulted in a slightly more diverse mix of types and tenures. Um, in parallel with that, we also were still engaging with RPs and as I said, people like pension funds and that resulted in sort of a slightly reformulated housing strategy, which we think is much better, um, both in terms of meeting local need and creating a sustainable community um, and allows a slightly faster delivery by virtue of that wider range of tenures um, and wider range of delivery partners. Okay, the, the, the policy in the core strategy, or the policies rather in the core strategy review, um, set out in some detail the, uh, the anticipated um, range of, of housing types and tenures, et cetera. So the example includes um, specific reference to affordable housing, but also um, to um, specialist forms of housing, et cetera. Uh, again, is, is there, has there been a significant shift in, in what's anticipated through the development since that point? Um, I think it's probably fair to say there has been some shift, yeah. Um, so al although it does set out some detail, um, I suppose it effectively comes down to um, sort of traditional affordable rent, um, intermediate and, and an elderly requirement. Um, we've gone beyond that um, as, as a result of this work over the last year or so. So I mean, I guess some of the things that wouldn't have been envisioned then, um, we've been working with care providers and looking at um, kind of step down accommodation for those um, uh, leaving hospital or, or other healthcare provision. Um, we've um, included some live work provision, um, which has kind of resulted from discussions with the council about the needs of uh, the local creative sector and kind of affordable workspace. Um, we've also, as I say, included that intermediate rent provision, um, which is kind of aligned to uh, a lot of key worker income. So I suppose we've, we've built on that original policy requirement. Um, um, and perhaps it's not a question that you can answer, but I'll, I'll ask it and, and feel free to, to, to not answer this particular one. But in relation to the viability assessments that were carried out, we, we raised this last week, the um, the point that the, as we, as we understand it, and I think Mr. Brearley confirmed this, that the, the viability assessment work was based on the premise that um, delivery would be up in the order of 300 units a year. Um, in terms of the implications of that, as far as the, the overall viability and delivery of the, of the proposal are concerned. Yeah, so um, I think again, Mr. Brearley was, um, I suppose I think he was basing that and he was basing the um, are you looking at the evidence informing that as being really market sale absorption largely um, based on what I've said earlier about 57% of, of, of the proposal is market sale housing so you can see that um, you know if, if that were achievable for market sale 300 per year then um, kind of 500 per year doesn't look unreasonable um, when you consider that market sale would only be say 57% of the total um, and those um, primarily um, built to rent um, would be ad adding to that but also some of the um, things like elderly and care and, and specialist etc. Okay. I think experience elsewhere is that those types of uses don't really compete with, with market sales. It's, it's a different type of demand. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Buckley. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> just coming back really to CPRE's concern, it has been raised already this morning about the optimism behind the scale and the speed of development. Uh, I've done just a little bit looking at Ebsfleet Develop Garden City which obviously is a government sponsored new housing area, had originally outlined planning permission for 10 and a half thousand new homes. They're charged to build up to 15,000. Um, in the last year, that's 2019-20, looking on their data site, they completed 553 homes 
and they have something in the order of 10 house builders, primarily volume and a couple of RSLs, helping deliver that level of uh, housing. And also obviously, Epswick Garden City does benefit from the uh, passenger station at Epsleep with a 17 minute service to London. Blue Water, currently closed, but uh, often quite an, an offer for people. Uh, and obviously International Station at Epsleep once Eurostar services start up again. So it, it has quite a lot going for it. And I, I just think it's the optimism side is, is the issue to just be wary of, sir, the extent to which the scale build at Optical may be possible. Um, I think looking at the Letwin report, the 6.5 came from all 15 sites. I think if you looked at the sites within that for 6,000 to 9,000, um, and that's in paragraph 3.4 of the June 28 document, there's a graph that just sets out the, the annual average for those sites. Uh, and they do vary from sort of basically 5.8 at Ebsleet through to 6.4 at Barking Riverside. So 6.5 may be a, a, an optimistic figure. That's really, I think, probably the figures are not too unreasonable, but they will need quite a good win behind them to achieve, I think will be my thoughts. So. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berend. Thank you, sir. Um, I think it is uh, a deliverable number of homes. Uh, it is a lot of homes to be delivered on, on that side, and it is, a, it is a high number compared to um, other, uh, other sites uh, with regard to the, the total amount of delivery. I think in terms of peak delivery, there are developments that do hit that level of, of peak. If you have the sales outlets and if you have the variety of de developer on site, it would seem that the council are looking to uh, bring forward a, a, a quite a wide variety of provider in terms of both the, the, the type of developer and also the nature of the development coming forward. So I think it, it, there is some reassurance in terms of that. I think my concern is, is in terms of what happens if it doesn't achieve that level of delivery. And I think that's where the, this, the, the concerns raised around flexibility in a plan in terms of making sure that actually, if these very uh, high levels of delivery aren't achieved, where is the development delivery going to come forward to sort of make up that? And that's where you have that flexibility in supply in terms of having that additional supply above and beyond uh, what your minimum housing requirement is. So I think it's, it's that element of it that is potentially missing in terms of the supply. Not that um, uh, there's... A, the, the garden community, um, the new settlement is, is, is at Pool Park is a problem. I think it's ambitious delivery and I think the council should be uh, congratulated for that. It's in terms of actually what happens if it doesn't quite hit that because there isn't that particularly large level of supply, particularly in the five year land supply towards it in the middle period of the plan. If that doesn't uh, hit that, then they're not going to have that five year land supply. And I think that is the concern I have in terms of that delivery across the entire trajectory and whether there's a robustness in terms of up going above and beyond the minimum requirements needed to ensure a five-year land supply and ensure actually in the end of the plan that needs met in full. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Perhaps I could just ask the council to um, respond to that particular point. Um, so the the, um, the highest figures, of course, um, are after year ten. Yeah. If you look at if you look at the period, the first five and the first ten years. Um, I do think uh, anyone would have a problem with those figures at all. Uh, so if there is any optimism, and we dispute that it's optimistic, we think it's a fair assessment. It's in relation to year 10 uh, and onwards. And uh, we have to have regard to the requirements of the MPPF. We know that um, it's difficult to be entirely accurate about um, uh, delivery in the later years of the plan period. But there is sufficient evidence to suggest that those figures are attainable. Um, um, and I, I think, therefore, in the context of what the MPPF requires, the evidence before you, sir, and your fellow inspector is robust, sufficiently robust at plan level um, to um, accept um, that the trajectory is a reasonable one. And if, if, it, if it turned out that monitoring showed that those sort of numbers, so for example, in, in year six to 10, those sort of numbers were not being achieved. 
yeah. what mechanism would the council employ to, to address that situation? Well, uh, don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. I'm not, I'm not promoting an early review as a solution to not finding enough uh, land for houses. Um, uh, well, it will inevitably um, be a matter which has to be kept under the review and will be the subject of the standard review um, 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 requirements for, for local plans. Um, and if they're not delivering, we don't think there's any reason to suspect that they won't, but if they're not, then of course, the council will have to think very carefully about whether there is a need um, to um, embark on a review that seeks to uh, increase provision somehow and somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the inevitable consequence, but we don't see that happening because the numbers actually for the first 10 years are entirely reasonable given this huge a capacity of the site to absorb um, many developers and many types of product. Indeed, but the, the point that Mr. Barrett made there that um, it, it's it's a strategy that it's a, uh, there is no alternative to it in, in effect. It, it's not no. there isn't any flexibility from the start. So if, we, if we know that, why we know why there's no alternative at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's because of the severe constraints. Yeah. Uh, and that's why this site is being promoted in such a large scale. But if it were the case that delivery was not happening either on that time scale or, or at that rate or both, um, your view is that there would be time that, that the more significant completions don't kick in until slightly later in the period. So there would be time if necessary for the council to review the situation. Yes, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't require a, a major uh, or strategic allocation if the numbers were, were uh, not reaching uh, the anticipated uh, annual total, um, then um, there might be, uh, uh, I just postulate, um, um, the possibility of identifying sites um, or granting planning permission for sites which um, are small but are able to um, top up um, the completion rates. But you, you would accept that the, as it stands for that trajectory there is little if any flexibility in the numbers so it, it, this, this strategy needs to work. It needs to work, it does need to work, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Horner. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I do find myself agreeing with Mr. Berendt um, about the concern for the uh, Article Park development not being brought on as quickly as is planned. But um, I suspect my, my concern is a bit different from his um, in that I, we believe that the most likely thing to happen is that the the market take up will not um, will not produce those house building numbers. So um, our concern is that if the Osborne Park comes along more slowly than planned, then will that cause a uh, if you like a, a need to change the plan for Osborne Park itself so as to keep it. Um, sustainable to in all um, and, and so as to, to achieve the critical mass that it needs to be a, a separate community. Um, uh, Mr. Behrens concern may be that uh, if if houses aren't being built there then he'd like to build some somewhere else but um, as I say I think the, the concern is that the, there won't be a market for the houses rather than they just won't be able to build them fast enough. Uh, I think house builders have, have demonstrated in the past that if there is a market, they will build houses. Um, that's that's fine, and um, and I don't see too many um, problems with actually bringing them on in this location. Since the land ownership has been sorted out, and um, as long as these infrastructure requirements can be sorted out, then why not? Um, so. As I say, the, the problem for us is, will this thing limp along rather than being the all singing, all dancing, fantastic new garden town that it's supposed to be? Okay, thank you.
Okay. Um, thank you. So just just to bring bring the issue the the, the supply side of things together uh, as an overview, just just pulling all the figures to, together. Um, the um, we we started off looking at what the requirement for the periods that, that first five year period is, um, which um, factoring in a five percent buffer. Uh, we give a requirement of 3,098 for that five-year period. The council's trajectory um, indicates a supply of 3,215. Um, yeah. So in that sense, the council's view presumably is, is therefore that there, there would be a, a five-year supply for that, for that first period of time. Just about, yeah. Yes, that's correct, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, just um, rolling that on, um, as I said before, just just taking taking the position as of 2020 stroke 21 um, as, a, as a, a likely time scale for adoption. Um, I don't want to go through all the different sources of supply again and, and the rationale for that. I think we've, we've covered that well. Um, so really just just to come back to the, to the, the implications for the figures. Uh, I don't know whether the council has, has had a chance to just work through what the, what the situation would be if, if you rolled that the five the first five year period forwards to start from 2020 stroke 21. Have you had a chance to do that, Mr. Bailey? Uh, I have had a look at that, yes. Um, so I have got some figures um, that we can discuss for this section. Yeah, if you could run through those, that would be helpful. Yeah, two seconds, I'll just bring them up. So um, in terms of uh, strategic permissions, um, in, in Appendix 4, Table 1, uh, the Council would make that um, a, a total supply there of 1,389 units. Yeah. Then for planning permissions and those under construction for 10 or more, that would be uh, 376. For 10 or more not under construction, um, that would be 175, applying the 5% uh, non-implementation discount. For um, sites one to nine units and under construction, um, we make that 81 units. Uh, one to nine not started, 141, applying the discount. And then existing core strategy in places and policies without permission would be 902. And then uh, 475 for the windfall allowance of 95 for over the five year period. Um, oh, no, sorry, no, forget that. Um, be not be um, 180 for that period. Um, so the overall, um, so, and then core strategy um, without permission, I've got 562. So then, so I just have to do a slight recalculation based on the windfall. Um, two seconds. So make that, it would be 3,806 units over that period from 2020, 21 for five years. And that's including the non-implementation discounts. So three, 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 uh, okay, and comparing that with the requirement for that period, um, again, if we use the step trajectory, um, I, I was working on the basis that 
because we've moved we would move into the next step so there'd be four years at 519 one at 920 yep makes sense yeah yep so um if I three thousand Just have to update some of my figures based on that. Um, so, in terms of the average um, requirement, if we were to take the the seven three eight, um, then I calculate that at about an oversupply or or, or um, a headroom of about three hundred units. Mm -hmm. And I was sort of made about about five point two years in terms of housing supply, um, and then if we take the stepped trajectory, then um, I I sort of calculate that as having. Sorry, can you just sorry. just go back to the, to the average trajectory yep. of the eight? Um, so, so. Times that, yeah. Hang on a second, sorry. Um, sorry, just bear, bear with me a minute. Sorry, we'd have um, we'd have a hit headroom of maybe sort of 60 to 70 units there just so we so we'd have um we'd have um housing potential housing supply of 3806 yeah. um and um a requirement of uh 3875 so the requirements more than the supply uh Yeah, just because I, I made an error with the uh, the windfall allowance um, for that period. Just throw my figures out. So that we yeah that would that would that would that would just put us just slightly under the five year land supply. Yeah, and taking a step trajectory. Um, on the basis of four four years at five hundred and ninety and one year at nine hundred and twenty, um, then you'd also need to factor in the five percent buffer. Yeah, um, I think if, I come up with a figure of about three thousand four hundred and forty three thousand four four four. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's that's around what I've got it as well. Okay. So. Um, just just on that front, um, if if we were to roll that first five year period forward to start in 2020 um then obviously we need to take account of of what's actually happened in in the first year of the plan period 2019 20. Mm -hmm. uh, so actual completions as you confirmed before were 440 so um even on the basis of that stepped trajectory there would be a, a shortfall from that first year which would need to be factored in would it uh, yes that that would be correct if he went if 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 he went with that uh, sort of strategy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, the, the the basic um, if you take the stepped trajectory, we've agreed that the figure the basic figure would be three thousand four hundred forty four. Um, but then if you applied the one hundred and fifty shortfall prior to adding the buffer a bit complicated i appreciate apologies <laughs> um so if you if you factor in that 150 shortfall to the, the annual requirements um and then apply a five percent buffer the figure i came up with is in the order of 3602 i would agree with that yes but that would mean the the supply the, the supply is still in would still be in excess of that that yeah, which would give us a positive five-year land supply for that period using a step trajectory. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Before we move on to later.
parts of the plan period. Any any comments or questions anyone has about that the five year? So uh, I mean, clearly, if if the um, the, the figure of seven thirty eight, um, which is in the submitted plan, was was used as the requirement, that there wouldn't be a five year uh, supply. Um, either taking 2019 or, or 2020 as, as the base date. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Just moving on to to later parts of the plan period. Again, I don't don't wish to go through the detail of the um, of the trajectory, but perhaps just to summarise the, the the key figures that emerge. So, if we take years six to ten next. Yeah. Okay. So in, in, in terms of um, an average, or if, if, if it were to take the average requirement, then um, that, would, that would yield a, a requirement of 3,690 within that time. Yeah. Um, or the, uh, say the council is proposing the uh, step trajectory of 920, which would yield a requirement of 4,400, uh, sorry, which would yield 4,600. Yeah, okay. And in terms of supply, um, the total supply for that period, there was the correction um, just in relation to the PPLP sites. Yeah. yeah. Um, so after that was a there was a, a discount of eleven, wasn't it? So um, with the five percent implementation discount, I'd make that four thousand six hundred and fifty supply. So <clears throat> on that basis, the, um, the supply within the six to 10 year period would just, just about cover the, the requirement for that period of... Okay. That's correct, yes, sir. Mr. Bowen. Mr. Bowen. Sir, uh, did they cancel um, uh, add the 5% buffer within that? Because obviously that is part of the, uh, the requirement which would leave a, a, a requirement at that point of 4,830 against a supply of um, 4,650 in terms of the supply. So it's just in terms of the 5% the buffer would be required as policy as part of uh, the MPPF. So you've got uh, uh, 4,600 as the overall requirement plus the 5%, which would be 230, which would be 4,830 just, just um, uh, for that five year period. Obviously it's the, uh, that buffer is a part of that, that, that supply requirement. Yeah, as I understand it, that, that's not been factored into the, the council's calculations. You haven't, you haven't applied it. No, we've only applied the 5% to the first, to the first five years of the plan period. Okay. On the basis of, of what the MPPF says about buffers and five year supply. So you've, you've taken the view that um, when you're looking at the longer time period that that buffer doesn't apply at, at this point in time when looking ahead to six to 10 years. So my understanding is, 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 is that the 5% buffer is only applied sort of to the first five, five, five years that we haven't say, looked at that longer term beyond, beyond that period. I suppose the point Mr. Barron presumably you're making is that if you roll things forward, yeah. when, you, when you come to reassess a five year supply, in due course, you you would have to apply that buffer, uh, and as as things stand, um, but for the purposes of a of a, a local plan trajectory, looking at those longer time periods, you, you would accept it's we're talking about a, a developable sites rather than deliverable. Yeah, I, I suppose we are talking about developable sites. It's just in terms of if you're looking at uh, whether there is a five year land supply in terms of at all points through through that local plan. That you would look to have that five percent buffer because the five percent buffer is on on land supply. Uh, regardless, it's not like twenty percent, uh, which would be required if you fall below a certain level of delivery. The expectation is that five percent is there. So, if you were looking at your five uh, five year uh, land supply at any point, sort of in the in the future, you would 
uh, my understanding would be that you'd include that 5% with, within that to understand what position you would be as a, a local authority at that, uh, at that point, because that is what you would have to provide at that, uh, at that for, for that five years, for those five years. Okay, thank you. Okay, and then if we could move on to um, years 11 to 15 in the trajectory. Again, just, just an overview of the figures, please. Okay, yep, so um, taking an average of 738 um, would yield Again, 3,690 um, in terms of requirement. And then a step trajectory of 730 um, would yield 3,650. Okay. Uh, and in terms of supply for that period? Um, in terms of supply, then, uh, we'd, be looking, we'd be looking at um, strategic such as planning permission would yield 417. Mm -hmm. Ex existing core strategy and places and policies without planning permission, 103. Windfall allowance of 475. And, um, and core strategy allocations without planning permission, 2,706. So that by my calculations, including the 5% um, non-implementation for years 11 to 15 would yield 3,701 yeah. dwellings. Okay, thank you. Which uh, would, would all uh, just about cover um, the, the requirement for those periods. Okay. Um, okay, uh, and then I suppose pulling this all together, uh, if we take the, the overall plan period, 2019-20 um, to 2036-37, um, the, um, the overall requirement, um, taking the 738 per annum over an 18 year period, uh, works out at 13,200 85, I think, if we, if we remember to get some more points on that one. 84, 85, yep. Um, and in terms of uh, overall supply within that plan period, the council, the latest figure we've got there from the council is 13,670. That, that would need to be reduced for, for the... For By the 11. Yeah. Yep. Work out that. that would it, give us about 375 difference between requirement and supply for the plan period. Okay. So for, for the plan period, um, based on the council's estimates, there is um, just about uh, an adequate supply of housing land. Um, you'd accept there's, there's very little, if any, flexibility in that figure. And I suppose the other point is, as, as you've emphasised a number of times throughout the various hearing sessions, th th this is the council's estimate of, of, the, of the total supply. There, there isn't you don't have with the sites up your sleeves as it were to to bring forward into the development process uh no i mean i say the council acknowledges that the, the margins between um requirement and supply are tight but as mentioned at the beginning of this session um we have provided additional evidence to the examination uh setting out um our evidence behind land supply which uh, looks at the various stages that we've gone through in terms of trying to identify sites, um, assessment of sites and so forth. And the council is, is confident in its position that it has allocated between the core strategy in place and policies local plan, all um, deliverable and suitable sites. 
Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, just have a, a, a quick question in relation to the uh, sites of one hectare or less. But before before we go on to that, just any any further points or comments from any other participants in relation to to housing supply and delivery overall, and, and the numbers we've just gone through. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, finally, then just just a, a quick question. I'm conscious of the the council's response to our to our written questions, but um, the specific requirement in the MPPF paragraph 68 um, to um, identify sites to accommodate um, at least 10 percent of the housing requirement on sites no larger than one hectare. Um, the council's position on that, and if, if you want to add anything to it, but I think we're, we're, we're fully aware of it. The position is that it, it's the nature of, of this plan and, and the, the strategy for delivery, which is to, to, to come through, largely to come through the, the new garden settlement along with other strategic sites. So in practical terms, it, it is just not possible for the council to, um, to have accommodated 10% of the housing need. And I think, uh, and I think, as evidenced within the uh, within the uh, council's response to the main matters question, there just isn't the sites of that size in the supply to meet to, to meet that requirement. And obviously, the MPPF does acknowledge that ten percent may not always be achievable. Okay. Uh, but as far as um, I suppose maximizing or optimizing the, the the potential for small sites the, the council's confident that it's done all it can uh, for example through the pplp uh, uh, and other mechanisms uh yes yes that would be the view of the council as it as set out in the appendices to main matter eight uh, the council hot hot highlights just a handful of sites that of one hectare or less that weren't allocated and there are justifiable reasons against each of those as to why they weren't brought forward so yeah the council the, the council is confident that it's done everything it it, it, it can do in order uh, to meet to meet that to meet that requirement okay thank you okay uh good that that's that's all the questions i have i don't know if uh, mr Milam has anything he wishes to add anything he wishes to raise before we bring matters to a close I'll take it not unless he puts his hand up. No. Um, okay. Any any final points from from anyone that we haven't covered uh, before we close, Mr. Horner? Just a small point, sir. If um, the council are revising and reissuing the document that we've been looking at today, they might like to have a look at the date on the front cover, which um, I suspect should be January twenty twenty one rather than twenty twenty. Well, thanks very much <laughs> indeed we're all living in the past as they say but yes yes thank you for spotting that mr horner okay good no no further comments um okay so uh, I'll, I'll bring matters to a close we, we've got the uh, the session this afternoon uh, moving on to other policies um at the end of that, we'll perhaps just do just do a, a brief recap of this current situation with the council as far as um uh, concluding hearings are concerned. Uh, Mr. Shadaravian, yeah. I, I was going to address that very point, actually. Um, because we, we need, just something to think about, we need um, another day for highways, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I'm just wondering whether it might be um, prudent, um, because you're going to be in receipt of further information as well on other things, uh, whether it will be prudent to programme in a reserve day, so we're looking at two days rather than just one more day for highways, just in case. Yeah. So when we know when we're coming back for highways, um, we actually factor in a further day as well, just in case. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think um, we, we, we've, Mr. Malam and I have had some discussions um, on this matter. I think we we were perhaps anticipating that the the transport issues um, would perhaps be dealt with in half a day but it would be sensible to 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 have a day set aside just in case that stretched uh and then th there are as you say a number of um the bits of information which which 
still awaiting. Um, so yeah, I, I think in principle, um, probably two days set aside. Whether we whether we'd need two full days is, is another matter, but I think it's sensible to probably program two days in. Um, um, I suppose as we've as we've raised as as it's been raised now. So we we we're no further forward as far as um, statements of common ground from Highways England are concerned. Still, we're still. We're still um, toing and fraying with lots of information, lots of detail, um, but we're hopeful that it'll be resolved very shortly. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I mean, with that in mind, I think all we can say at this stage is that, um, you know, we're on, on receipt of that and, and any further updates, we'll, we'll take a view as to, to when that, that, that final couple of days of the hearings can be programmed. Um, obviously, we'll need to, to look at everyone's availability. Um, yep. And liaise with yourselves on that yeah okay thank you thank you okay thank you all very much um so that brings uh, the morning session to a close and we're coming back again at two o'clock uh, moving on to